Hey Stampers, it's Meg from Loven Stamps and I am excited to be here because it's Friday and it's a beautiful sunny day where I am so I hope it's a sunny happy morning wherever you are. Uh, we are going to do shaker cards today and I uh, loved the bookmarks that we made earlier in the week. These were um, our our shaker bookmark tag ideas. Um, they make little cute Christmas gifts and so forth with the sequins and everything in, oops, there you go, everything in there. So you can check these out from earlier in the week in the um, Loven Stamp Studio Tours Holiday Helper. Today, we are going to make the Christmas card version because uh, why keep it tiny when you can make it big? And I promise to share with you my trick for where the sequins come from because the paper for this is the absolutely beautiful um, Snowflake Splendor, which here is a little piece of it. It's the gorgeous blues and pinks and so forth from the holiday catalog. There's a whole Snowflake Suite, which I adore, um, but we are going to pair this instead of with the Snowflake set with Peace and Joy, which is a word art set. And last month on my um, website or my blog at lovenstamps.com, I shared video tutorials and um, projects for the stamp set and the coordinating dies that go with them and uh, they are they're just a great match for the the feel and the the look of this snowflake splendor paper so we're going to turn this into a uh, shaker card and to do that we need something to shake in it and of course the everything is uh, everything is well the sequins um, that are in the holiday catalog just aren't the right color tones for this so We'll see um, where those are going to be coming from. But here is the card that we're going to make. All right, so kind of fun with a shaker. But let's get started and I'll give you some ideas. So what you're gonna want for this project is um, the pieces of cardstock you're gonna need. You're gonna want uh, one clear medium envelope is what they're called in the Stampin' Up! website. Um, they are linked there's a entire supply list linked in the video description here so if you're looking for any of these things you can get them all online in that link and there's a hostess code there too so all right we are doing purple posy i've got my purple posy card base i love this color um, if you're looking for the ink for this stampin up never um, came out with an ink that they loved for this color. It turned out to be a really difficult color, but it pairs as cardstock beautifully with other supplies. So um, still definitely having Purple Posy on hand is a good choice. And you will notice that we use a giant piece of the Balmy Blue Glimmer paper, which um, since you get two 12 by 12 sheets in a package feels like a crazy use of your paper, but you can see that this was very easily um, remedied by the fact that we have amazing stitched rectangle dies, which, uh, well, they were here a second ago. There they are. Um, make it really easy to cut out the centers for what you're doing. So, hey, Tanya, hey, Donna. Um, if you guys, whether you guys have watched a zillion of these holiday helper, well, I guess 31 would be the maximum um, videos, or you're new today, make sure you leave a comment and say hi and where you're watching from. So, and you can say if it's sunny there or not too. Uh, so these are what you're gonna use to cut out the center and then just save that center part for another project. All right, so let's talk about the shaker part. I have my DSP designer series paper cut to fit perfectly in the bottom of the envelope and that dimension is four and three eighths, okay? I know that this fits a four and a quarter size card, but we want it to go all the way to the ends so that there's no chance of those sequins um, popping around to the back side of our paper. So it's tight, but that's what we want. So it just barely fits in there, okay? Then what you wanna do is we wanna make the shaker cart. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carefully tear the cello bag, and I apologize if this is hard to see. We're using clear materials. Um, or you can use your snips, but you want to tear carefully right along the seams there, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to um, cut away the part that would be on the back side. Let me grab my snips here, and I'll show you. So I'm going to fold the front out of the way and then just cut the back. And it doesn't have to be super close. we got lots of space to work with here. It's not like the bookmark where we were pretty tight, okay? So now when I fold this around to the back, 
it's gonna make that tight there. If you don't cut that extra piece away, you're gonna end up clipping this to, um, gluing it to itself and you end up with a pocket that's still open. So uh, you wanna cut that away. All right, now next thing, the sequins, ta-da! They are from the Whale of a Time Suite, which is the, um, the cute whale, and I have a bunch of videos for that on my blog too, um, at lovenstamps.com if you're looking for the whale suite. But these sequins have in them um, a great variety of blues and sort of pool party-ish colors, and then all these little coral pieces. And um, if it looks like there are a lot of little coral pieces in here, that's because what I've been doing to make these shaker cards is putting a whole bunch of the pieces in the lid, okay? And then I go back and I take out the little coral pieces because they don't really fit with our snowflake theme and they just go back in the container. So I think at the end of my Christmas season, when I'm done making these cards, I'm gonna end up with a big um, box of sequins that are only the coral, and maybe I'll make something cute for whale of a time, whale of a time with those, but let me get all these out of the way here. Okay, so what I'm left with are perfectly matched blue and um, light blue and pool party sequins, and I just dump them in the front there, and then I'm going to go ahead and fold this over the back. Now, it's a little bit long with this size. Um, I didn't tell you the other dimension. It is, looks like three and a quarter. So it's three and a quarter by four and three eighths. But honestly, this dimension can be anything. You just need it to be the perfect four and three eighths to fit in the front of your cello. All right, I'm going to take this and to make sure that it's really well sealed, I'm gonna put a line of seal plus. Oh, I forgot to rock and roll. Um, what did I, I said something yesterday that was really, I kind of liked for that. All right, so I've sealed that up. So now my sequins are in there. I can't dump them on the floor uh, as I am sometimes want to do. And then I am going to trim away the extra solo um, there. So, hey, look at this. So these are my little trash bins. If you didn't see these on the um, uh, Love and Stamp Studio Tours, I showed these little trash bins um, kind of early on and they are uh, super cute because they're themed for the holidays and I just realized I'm gonna have to make some new ones pretty soon for uh, once we get past Thanksgiving, which is quickly approaching. All right, so there's our shaker. All kinds of fun, right? You can hardly resist playing with it. Now let me show you how I attached this because um, you want to give yourself the best chance of getting all the pieces layered. Um, let it roll, how would that be? Mm -hmm. Roll on pass, I don't remember. I'll have to look up and see what I said. Okay, so anyway, I put a strip on both ends for my shaker box. I'm gonna move my paper out of the way because I kinda like to do this on my tabletop. Um, I like to stick it down from the front so I can make sure that it is um, centered on there, but I also don't want it to stick to the paper. Um, or stick to my grid paper. So you'll notice that I kinda did stick it to the table there's a really important key to peeling layers apart. And it's true when you accidentally or on purpose stick things to the table too. You don't want to peel up like this, um, here, like this. Okay, because what that does is it breaks and bends all the fibers in your cardstock. And then the, it's hard for the cardstock to go back to its, its native flat spot. And so what you want to do, instead of peeling things back to get them off the countertop, you want to twist them or shear them, okay? So I would just slide it like this and that would break the bond between the adhesive and the countertop or between the adhesive and the card layer, okay? So keep that in mind if you're ever pulling card layers apart. Don't bend, always slide or twist, okay? All right, so that being said, we've got this pretty well stuck down and then I'm gonna go back here and add a little bit more adhesive to make sure that it's not going anywhere and to make sure my frame is gonna stick. And then I almost did this, I almost stuck it down, but before I stick it down, I whew, actually need to do some stamping. Um, move my sequins out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and just stamp um, a couple of these little sparkles here in um, gorgeous grape. And then I am going to stick down my shaker box, okay? Like that, ta-da! So pretty. Okay, so next on our card, we need to, um, I'm gonna show you some tips for how to make this star be exactly where you want it and how to get these pieces stuck down. And for that, I'm gonna use a lot of green lid glue or multi-purpose 
liquid glue. So I'm gonna bring my stamp back in. And again, this is from the Peace and Joy stamp set, which I adore so much that I featured it last month for um, Loven Stamps uh, card kits. And so this month, Loven Stamps card kits are the triangle stamp set, and you'll wanna check those out. I almost did that on the wrong paper. And then I've got my per piece of purple posy here. And when you are stamping on um, photopolymer stamps, usually, it works best to put a um, piercing mat underneath so you get a really nice contact between your stamp and the paper, okay? So then this uh, needs to get die cut. So let's see, why don't I, I'll just bring you over here with me. Um, the peel sound effect. <laughs> Thanks, Diana. Okay, which was the peel, oh, the peel, oh, when I took my layers apart. Yeah, I have a tendency to make some funny, uh, to make some funny sounds. I think when I stamp it, I don't even realize it. So, all right. Oh, I didn't know if you saw this, um, but I'll show you since we're over here. You see how I have my um, die right here on this little magnet board? These are a really, really great tool to have um, near your, your die cut machine, um, your stamping cut and emboss machine. So what it is, is it's just a photo frame from the dollar store. And then the piece on the front is a magnet sheet. So especially this time of year, you'll find these everywhere. They are um, sold as vent covers. So you could like magnet the front of your vent cover if you didn't want the air to blow out through it. And so all you do is take that off, um, put some tear tape across the back to stick the magnet on here, and then you have a die holder. So you don't lose your pieces. If you're making multiples of a card, you just stick them on there in between. Or if you're a demonstrator and you're running classes, then it's a great way for people to be able to find the pieces they need. So, morning, Pat. All right, oops, <laughs> wrong view. Okay, so coming back here, um, we have our die cut piece here. I'll get this out of the way. And I'm going to attach this to the layer. And the reason I actually wanted to do that and show you was that the um, stars uh, are great. They're, they come um, a ton to a package, like 12, I think. You get 12 of these little guys. And they have this cute string on them that we're just gonna use. You could take the string off and replace it with something else if you wanted. But I want the star not to hang down, like off the edge of our card, because that is kind of where it would hang on its own. So we're gonna get the star to hang exactly where we want it. And that is to be much further up on our bright. So here's my trick for that. I'm gonna open up the string, and you could like tie the string shorter if you wanted to, but I kind of like this one because it it adds some little extra thread interest. And I'm going to pull the star up so that it is um, really high close to the bright. And then what I've done is I have put the string to the back side of the H, if you can see that. So I'm gonna flip this over now and I'm going to grab my um, green lid, my multipurpose liquid adhesive and pop this on the back. And uh, I like to say with this glue that if you can see it, it's enough, okay? And I'm gonna make sure I get um, glue that I can see, especially on the back of that upper H there, because I want to have our, here's my little glue holder. Um, I wanna have our string get nicely stuck there. Okay, I'm gonna pick this up, keep my string there, keeping my star where I want it, and pop this down here on the back. And one of the great things about the liquid glue is that it gives you a little bit of extra time that you can still kind of scoot things around after you've stuck it down. Because it doesn't have an instant grab. It has a really strong grab, but it's not totally, um, not totally instant grab. Okay, so there we go. See how now our star hangs exactly where we want it. I just thought that was super cute with the, the theme of our card, bright and snowflakes and so forth. So then I'm just gonna pop some more green lid glue on the back of that um, because that is an excellent glue for sticking things to um, cellophane or sticking things to these clear envelopes. So we had um, an on stage the Stampin' Up! convention this past weekend and I love these sequin cards but I haven't done one for years, like since 2017, if you want to look back at my blog. And a demonstrator, um, Rosemary Gonzalez, uh, okay, if I got the name wrong, I'll leave it in the comments, so I apologize. But um, she showed some beautiful cards with some upcoming projects and she um, 
reminded me that we have to get these sequin um, shaker cards out. So uh, thank you to her for coming up with that fabulous reminder. And then the last thing we're gonna do um, to finish off this card is add the little Marion Bright. There are a whole bunch of words here. Um, I'll let you check those out while I stamp. There are a whole bunch of words on this um, stamp set that just mix and match so beautifully. And so I'm gonna go ahead and use Mary Ann to go with our bright. And I'm gonna trim this maybe a little closer here because I got it kind of close to the top of our die cut letters. All right, so um, on the video information, I said that next week we are going to hold um, Magic Mondays. And I decided that Monday morning, um, Monday morning should have giveaways, right? Don't you think? Anyone? Monday morning giveaways? <laughs> um, so, um, Monday morning, I have a giveaway for you. I have card kits for today's card and yesterday's card. And these um, will be, we'll do a drawing on Monday during our live at 9.30 a.m. And um, to get your name in the drawing, you just need to leave a comment on today's card um, or yesterday's. Well, let's just do today's card. That would be much easier. So today's card. So if you leave a comment on today's card, it can be anything. Um, it can be your favorite uh, Stampin' Up! color. It could be whether it's sunny where you're at this morning. It could be um, that you're having fun watching these videos. But if you leave a comment, then your name will get entered and we will um, go ahead and do that drawing on Monday. And I will do two giveaways, one for each of these fun project kits. So. Um, and actually, that reminds me to tell you too, the project kits are also um, something that I do for my, um, thank you for online orders. So they won't be these two project kits, they'll be project kits for the triangle projects that I'm featuring this month. So um, you'll wanna check those out. And yay for giveaway Mondays, right Tanya? I hear you. Um, anyway, uh, you can learn more about how to get tutorials. You don't have to leave a comment or, um, have to can be concerned about whether you'll win the, the drawing. If you place an order in my online store for at least $50, you get two card kits um, in the mail at the end of the month, and they are um, designed to be made with the same set of project supplies. If you wanted to add um, stamp set or ink colors to your order to have what you need, you can learn more about those on my website at lovenstamps.com, and you want to look for the um, monthly tutorials, the card kits to go. So. All right, so there's our shaker card for the day. Um, I hope you guys are having a great Friday so far and you have excellent plans for the weekend and you will you can tell me about them in the comments. That could be part of your, part of your entry. But uh, if you decide to make some shaker cards, go ahead and let me know about those or post little pictures. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, the Low and Stamps Holiday Helper videos. This was day 31, which is kind of hard to believe. And Monday, day 32, we'll have Magic Monday giveaways. So make sure you tune in then also. Thanks guys, have a wonderful day and happy stamping.